This Beechcraft King Air aircraft was carrying out a chartered passenger flight from Essendon Airport to King Island in Tasmania. 12 seconds after takeoff, this flight ends in disaster. To see what happens and why, stay tuned. This is the story of Beechcraft King Air aircraft, Victor Hotel Zulu Charlie Romeo. On the 21st of February 2017, it was chartered for a passenger flight from Essendon Airport, Victoria in Australia, to King Island in Tasmania. The flight was due to take just under one hour, and there were four passengers on board that were going to play golf on King Island. The pilot was a 67-year-old male. He had a total of 7,681 hours flying, 2,400 of which were on type on the King Air aircraft. At 0706 local time, the pilot was first seen on CCTV carrying out a visual inspection of the aircraft as it was parked on the apron. Shortly after, at 0729, both the engines were started up. At this point, the pilot spoke to air traffic control and requested to reposition the aircraft to the southern end of the passenger terminal. This request was approved and the aircraft then taxied to the terminal. When it arrived, the aircraft was then refueled and the pilot was again seen on CCTV carrying out a walk round of the aircraft, which appeared to show another visual inspection. The pilot then left and went to the terminal to wait for the passengers to arrive. At 0841, the passengers arrived and were escorted by the pilot directly to the aircraft. Only a few minutes later, both of the engines were started and at 0853, the pilot then requested his taxi clearance. He also requested his departure details under instrument flight rules. Air traffic control instructed the pilot to taxi to the taxi holding points at Tango for runway 17 and provided clearance for the aircraft to depart to King Island with a visual departure to the south. The aircraft then taxied directly from the terminal to holding point Tango and then he was instructed to line up on runway 17. There was a short delay while air traffic control sorted a transponder code for the aircraft. Then at 0858, the aircraft was cleared for takeoff on runway 17 with departure instructions to turn right at a heading 200 after takeoff. The pilot read back the instruction and then commenced his takeoff roll. The takeoff roll was longer than expected on the runway and as soon as the aircraft became airborne, there was a noticeable yaw to the left of the aircraft. The aircraft entered a shallow climb and the landing gear remained down. It had a substantial left side slip and started to roll to the left. 10 seconds after takeoff, the pilot then transmitted Mayday, Mayday, Mayday seven times. And 12 seconds after takeoff, the aircraft crashed into the roof of the retail outlet center just outside the airport. The pilots and all four passengers were killed in the crash. So why did this happen? During the early stages of the investigation, it was suspected that the aircraft had had one of the engines fail on takeoff. This was due to several witnesses stating that they saw the aircraft yawing severely to the left. If the aircraft had lost its left engine, the aircraft would then be yawing towards the dead engine as the live one is pushing it in that direction. It was quite quickly discovered when inspecting the crash site that the left engine was operating as it left slash marks on the roof as it came down to crash. It was later discovered that the rudder trim wheel had been left fully deflected to the left for takeoff. The trim is super important on aircraft and for those that don't know, there's small trim tabs incorporated into the control surfaces of the aircraft. You can adjust them in flight so that the forces on the aircraft are leveled out and you can maintain level flight without having to put any control input in yourself. Now your trim is usually checked several times in the checklist before takeoff and for the King Air it should have been checked in the checklists for the pre-flight inspection, the before engine starting and the before takeoff checklist. Because the rudder trim was fully deflected to the left that's what caused the aircraft to yaw so severely to the left causing this massive side slip. The additional problem with the side slip apart from control issues is that it reduces thrust due to the change in the propeller inflow angles 
It increases form drag on the aircraft as there's a greater surface area towards the relative airflow. And it reduces the amount of lift available from the wings as some of the wing behind the fuselage of the aircraft is now blocked from the airflow. All those factors added to the issue of the aircraft struggling to climb. One of the other issues was that the aircraft was actually above its maximum takeoff weight by 240 kilograms. Now a reason why this can be a problem is that the performance calculations for the aircraft is usually based on the maximum weight it can use to take off. As this figure determines how quickly the aircraft can climb and if there's any obstacles around the airports that the aircraft needs to clear in a certain distance, it adds that into the calculations. It also shows that if you lose an engine, the performance that you will also require to still clear those obstacles and take off in a safe manner. Now, because the aircraft was overweight by 240 kilos, that was part of the problem for the longer takeoff roll and also its ability to climb. The fact that the gear also remained down also added to the extra drag of the aircraft, adding extra problems to its climb performance. Now, individually, all of these issues still pose a problem but combined, they created an issue that was unrecoverable from. It's a prime example of when you use the Swiss cheese model of where multiple different holes in that cheese, for example, lead to a failure. In this instance, the first one being the performance calculation for the aircraft being overweight, then not carrying out checklists correctly, also not checking the trims before takeoff, and then ultimately the actions upon realizing the aircraft had extreme yaw not bringing the gear up, reducing the drag to aid in the aircraft's climb performance. So what safety factors came out of this investigation? The obvious two being the necessity for checklists to be carried out correctly and also ensuring that the aircraft weight and balance limitations are not exceeded. It was also discovered that two out of the four buildings at the outlet retail centre had exceeded the obstacle limitation height for buildings surrounding the airport it was deemed unlikely that these had influence on the severity of the accident as the aircraft didn't crash into the taller ones. However, a separate safety investigation was then instigated to determine the approval process for buildings in the area surrounding the airport. Now, if you're interested in learning more about other air crash investigations or air accidents, click on the cards on the screen now. I would also really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe. But that's all we have, and I'll see you guys in the next one.